Good morning, year one and year two. Welcome back to. Oh, going to pause that there actually. What on earth is that? Take two in a second. There it. Strong. <clears throat> Good morning, Year 1 and Year 2. Welcome back to English Lessons Live with me, Mr. Phillips. It is hashtag Well Dressed Wednesdays. We are fancy in our shirt halfway through the week. Um, we're back with our writing again this week. Um, thank you to everyone who sent some writing in over the past few days. Um, I know Monday's writing lesson was quite difficult, but it's great to see those people have really, really um, tried their best with it. Today, we're going to carry on with that piece of writing and see if we can take it a little bit further. But first, let's have a little go at doing our spag warm up. And here it is our spelling, punctuation, and grammar warm up. So, this is our warm up for today. It says, tick the correct word to complete the sentence below. We will go cycling. We arrive home in time. Okay? So, you got that, or, but, or if. Those are your four choices. And these are all conjunctions. So these are all words, that or but if, that join together two clauses to join together information. But each conjunction can be used in different ways. So you can't just use and or but in the same sentence. You can use the same sentence, but you can't use it in, in the same place necessarily. It won't necessarily make sense. So you have to check to see which conjunction of that these four makes sense in that gap we will go cycling we arrive home in time what i would suggest you do just like when you buy a new top or um, a new hat or something like that you need to try them all on so i would try all four words in that space and see which one makes the most sense what i want you to do is pause the video there and just write down the word that or but or if which one you think fits in that gap there. Pause the video there and have a little go. Okay, should we have a little look? So we've got, we will go cycling, we arrive home in time. I'm gonna try all those words in that space and see which one I think makes the most sense. So we will go cycling, that we arrive home in time. No, that doesn't really make sense, does it? We will go cycling or we arrive home in time. Hmm, I suppose it could make sense. Feels a bit clunky though. We will go cycling but we arrive home in time. Again, it sounds a bit odd, doesn't it? It doesn't, it doesn't sound how people would speak. Uh, we will go cycling if we arrive home in time. Oh, that one fits really well. We will go cycling if we arrive home in time. That's the correct one. That's the one that makes the most sense. So we will give if a tick. Well done if you selected if there. Those are quite challenging sometimes because you've really got to be able to understand what makes sense and what doesn't. So the word is if. Brilliant. Let's remind ourselves of this picture that we started doing our writing on Monday. So that was our picture, wasn't it, from Pobble? And it had this girl gazing at this beautiful house surrounded by all the looming towering forests and we had these symbols at the bottom didn't we we had smell sound sight touch taste what someone was thinking what someone was saying what someone was doing or how someone felt so we were using those symbols to help us create sentences and then this is the piece of writing that we came up with last week. So our sentence all about smell was the hypnotic smell of the delicate flowers drifted through the air and into the little girl's nose. Our sound sentence was a choir of birds sat in the tallest trees, tweeting and singing merrily. And our sight sentence was her eyes were drawn to the magnificent grand castle with its towering spires and beautiful decorations. So those were the three we managed to create last time. Today we're going to have a go at doing the touch and we're going to have a go at doing the taste, which actually I think are the two more difficult ones to do. 
if there's time, we might have a little go at doing one of these four as well. We'll see how, how uh, we're going for time. Okay, so just like last week, we're going to start with a basic sentence. So we're doing touch first. So let's go back up to the picture and decide what is it that she's going to be able to touch with her hands. Now, you could do, remember, we're not repeating anything, so we can't say the house, so we can't say the flowers or anything like that. If you've not done the flowers, then of course you could do the flowers. We just remember not to repeat ourselves. So, well, we, she could touch the flowers, she could touch the grass. I mean, in the picture, she is actually touching the bark of the tree. So that might be a really good one to do, mightn't it? You could do the fact that she may, might be clutching her clothes or touching her face, or she might be wiping the sweat away from her face because she's come on such a long journey. All of those would be really good for touch. I'm going to go with the bark, though, because in the picture, she actually has got her hand on the tree bark here, hasn't she? So I'm going to do that one. So my basic sentence is, um, she felt the bark from the tree. That's my basic sentence. And you know that what we do next is we take that sentence and we improve it. So that's basically what we're going for. OK, so one thing I really liked about our sentences last time was they all started differently. We had one starting with the, one starting with a, and one starting with her. Now, if I can, I'm going to try and continue that pattern and keep my sentence is starting in different ways. So I might start with something called a fronted adverbial and they sound really complicated but it's just a little phrase or a little clause at the beginning of your sentence that gives us an idea of maybe where something was happening or how something was happening or when something was happening. So how, where or when. And it's just a little phrase that starts before our main sentence, our main clause. So maybe I could say, um, under her hands, under her hand. And we separate our front of the verb with a, with a comma, just to show it's separate from our main clause. So under her hand. So more examples of front of the verb would things be like above her head or in her ear or um, around her feet. Those are some examples of some really good um, location front of the verbials. So under her hand, and that's a really good and interesting way of starting my sentence. Under her hand, uh, what could we say? Uh, under her hand, maybe we could do under her hand, she felt the bark from the tree. We could literally just go like that. And that's how front of the adverbials fit onto your main clause. I still think we can make she felt the bark from under the tree. Now, if I'm just trying to imagine it in my head, when I put my hand on bark, or when I put my hand on a tree, for example, if I go for a walk in the woods or something, it kind of cracks away, doesn't it? It kind of like chips off a little bit because it's quite, it's not delicate, but it's easily chipped and easily cracked. So maybe we can talk about under her hand, the bark chipped away and it kind of leaves um, like a bit of a mess on your hand, doesn't it? So maybe we could talk about that. So under her hand, um, the bark from the tree um, crumbled. Yeah, crumbled and crumbled and cracked for a bit of alliteration. Words that start with the same sound. Crumbled and cracked. Under the, her hand, the bark from the tree crumbled and crack. Um, maybe we go for an ing. Um, leaving a, oh, what can we say? A, a earthy, because I was going to say like a, like a black stain, but if we say black stain, that's quite negative, isn't it? The idea of being like covered in, in like dirt and stains. That's quite negative, and we've been building up really um, positive descriptions, really happy descriptions. So we're going to try and make it not a bad thing. Um, so we're going to describe it as earthy and natural, so it sounds quite positive. The bark from the tree crumbled and cracked, leaving an earthy, earthy mark on her palm. There we go. She felt the bark from the tree. 
and that's been changed to, under her hand, the bark from the tree crumpled and cracked, leaving, uh, oh, that should be an earthy mark, an earthy mark on her palm. There we go. That's what she felt. And there's actually a little bit of sight in there as well, because we describe what the hand looks like. Okay? Now, this is a really complicated sentence. Okay? The actual breakdown of it is really complicated, because there's our main clause, the bit that makes sense, the bark from the tree crumpled and cracked. And then we've added on a fronted adverbial and something you learn about in year six called a non-finite clause, which is really, really, really complicated. But you can use that structure for any of these. For example, if we were doing the sound one again, you could say above her head, um, acquire, oh, we've done a non-finite clause here. Uh, above her head, a choir of birds sat tweeting and singing merrily. Actually, I've just noticed we've done exactly the same structure here, but we've just um, flipped it around. For example, in the tallest trees is our fronted adverbial, there's our main clause, and there's our ing clause. But if we actually took that and put it there, it would be exactly the same structure. In the tallest trees, a choir of birds sat tweeting and singing merrily. That's exactly the same structure as that. Front of the verbial main clause, ing. I know that's a bit complicated, but I've kind of gone off on one there, haven't I? I find, it, I find grammar very exciting. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've written a really complicated sentence there, so well done. So have a little go at um, describing what she feels. Um, my, the feeling words there are the crumbled and cracked, yeah? So, you know, crumbly, rough. Um, maybe I should put an adjective in there, the rough bark, just to kind of make sure I'm definitely hammering home how it feels for my audience. Under her hand, the rough bark from the tree crumbled and cracked, leaving an earthy mark on her palm. I think that's really, really good. Well done, us. What are we going to go next? Oh, next is the taste. Now, this one is really difficult because it's always quite funny, isn't it? Um, because most of the time your characters don't go around licking everything. Um, she's not going to go around and like lick the tree and lick the ground. So it's, sometimes it's really difficult to write what she tastes. Um, but let's go and have a little look. What could she possibly taste in this picture? Now, we can't do anything that we've already done. Now, if this was a seaside picture, we, there's that common phrase of people saying they could taste the sea salt. And it's kind of like because it's coming through the, the air and it's being blown into their mouth, like taste the sea salt. So maybe we could try and do the same kind of thing here, like an idea of a taste being blown towards us. So maybe there's some delicious food being cooked in the house and the taste is being kind of like wafted out of the window, like onto her tongue and she can kind of almost taste it. We've had that, haven't we? For example, when you smell something really lovely, like, oh, I can almost taste it. I think that might be the best solution here because there's nothing else really positive anyway that she could taste if we were doing a negative one sometimes you can and like she'd be running through the forest trying to escape something you could talk about how her, her mouth tasted numb uh, or was dehydrated because she'd been um, running so much but that's quite a negative one we want positive so we're going to do some delicious food um so my basic sentence oh what i'm going to do is i'm going to Make the picture just a tiny bit smaller so we could fit more writing on. There we go. So my basic sentence is going to be, she could taste, she could almost taste food coming, uh, food from the house. There we go. She could almost taste food from the house. Now there, I actually almost instinctively started to write some extra bits. For example, coming from the house. Because that's a great ing phrase or clause. Um, and the fact that I've included she could almost taste, straight away adding that adverb in instantly makes this sentence a little bit more interesting. So maybe this will be all right to write. Now, I've not actually started a sentence with the word she yet. So maybe I've got the, a, her, under. So maybe this could be a sentence. That begins with she, because it's all right to begin with she. I've just not done it yet. So um, 
draw. Could I do? I'm just trying to think how much of this do I actually need to change. Um, so I do like the idea. I'm going to write it again. I wonder if I can squeeze that gap up a bit. Ooh, there we go. I've made my page a bit bigger there. Um, she could almost taste food coming from the house. So maybe we will start with um, she could almost. Because that's I like the use of that adverb. She could almost, could almost taste the, let's put some adjectives in, the delicious mouth watering food. She could almost taste the delicious mouth watering food. Let's put um, a relative clause in which we looked at on our very, very first writing lesson with um, uh, the, the book about, oh, how to get her back home. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> the one with the boy and the alien, um, which is the who, which, where sentences. We, she could almost taste delicious mouth-watering food, which... Oh, because if I say which was drifting through the air, that doesn't make sense because the food isn't drifting through the air. I want to tell, say the smell was drifting through the air. She could almost taste delicious mouth watering, which was being prepared in the kitchen. Um, in, the, in the kitchen. Yeah, that's fine. She could almost taste the delicious mouth-watering food which was being prepared in the kitchen. It feels a little bit simple, but actually we've got in there two adjectives and an adverb. We've used a hyphen here, and then we've used a relative clause which was being prepared in the kitchen. There we go. So now I've got five full sentences all about description. The hypnotic smell of the delicate flower drifted through the air, flowers drifted through the air and into the little girl's nose. A choir of birds sat in the tallest trees, tweeting and singing merrily. Her eyes were drawn to the magnificent grand castle with its towering spires and beautiful decorations. Under her hand, the rough bark from the tree crumpled and cracked, crumbled and cracked, leaving an earthy mark on her palm. She could almost taste the delicious mouth-watering food which was being prepared in the kitchen. There we go. Those are five really good sentences. I think maybe now, just before we go, I'm going to try and add in one of these. I'm going to try and do feelings. And I think because she can do all of these things, she can see, hear, smell, taste, touch, all of these things, she's going to be feeling really happy. And if you feel really happy, your heart kind of feels like it's expanding and growing and you feel a really warm feeling inside. So I think I'm going to do that. So maybe like a warm glow spread through the little girl's body as what could she be realising as she maybe she realised she finally found a safe place as she realised she had found a safe place to rest. I've done that one really, really quickly for you there. But there, what I'm saying is I'm using this conjunction just like we did in our starter, as is a conjunction as well, and it's joining together. This happened because of this. This could easily be a because. A warm glow spread through the little girl's body because she realised she'd found a safe place to rest. But I think as sounds a little better. But it does the same job as because. So you could do um, how she felt, or not just saying she felt happy, but showing me she felt happy and why. So you could do her heart seemed to grow ten sizes because she realised that she was finally going to be able to get a good meal or something like that to be able to tell me how we know she's happy and what she realises. And then what we can do is put all that together into one big paragraph. Oh, look at this piece of writing, which is, we'll go away, lesson for another day. One big paragraph all about, ooh. I can't, can't. I'm going to move myself because I'm in the way of my, my scrolly mouse. There we go. 
all about that picture. Okay, so today's lesson again is quite difficult. So take some time and really think about each of these sentences. And I would love to be able to see some examples. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you tomorrow for our reading lesson. Bye, guys. Bye, bye, bye.